All right. Yeah. <laughs> Just let me know what you doing. Ready for your interview? Please, thank you. All right, you're good. Oh, well, you can see that. Let's read my English book. Before we start our story, I think we should go over a little bit of background. So the story takes place on a small farm in a, in a valley. And on that farm, it was all the farm animals, a bunch of chickens, and they're all taken care of by an old widow and her two daughters. And on that farm, there's one special rooster named Chancellor. And he's the top rooster of them all. He has the most, most beautiful voice of them all. And crows every single morning even the better times than all the clocks in the town. So, I think we should start with the story. So what were you doing that night? Yeah, me and Chancellor were just sleeping together and... Oh, yeah. Yeah, me and Chancellor were just sleeping together and he had a bad dream. Just one night, I was sitting there by my bed dreaming, and all I see is a big red fox swallow me up. And then Perdelet woke me up, shook me up and said, it's just a dream, it's just a dream. I don't want to believe her. He told me about it, this red beast that was eating him. And I told him that he was going to be okay. And, uh, and I looked around and I was in my farm and I had home. And I realized I was just dreaming. But it wasn't a dream. <laughs> Alright, so what happened on that day? Well, I was just... Out near the woods, looking at a butterfly too. And after I was done with some of my lady chickens, and just out of nowhere, this big red fox appears. In the morning, I heard Chancellor singing, so I I decided to go see him and hear him sing again. Hey, hey, you sing? So I saw him. I asked him to sing for me. It's yeah. Beautiful. Lit, lit, lit. He tells me the melodies are great. I start singing. I'm midway. Oh. And bam! He just snatched me up and took me down through the woods. Yeah. Nothing I could do. Once I heard his voice, I don't know, something just, just got to me. And I, I tackled him. So I'm in this goddamn fox's mouth, and I see it open up a little bit. And I skip him my way on up into the trees. He got away. I climbed up into a tree. And I, I asked him to get down. And as I'm up there, he looks up and says, Hey, get down from there. I was just, I love your voice, I love your melodies. I asked him to get down. I tried to convince him to come down. I just wanted to hear him sing. I didn't want to hurt him. I didn't want to eat him. That fox is trying to eat me, I swear! And I was like, no way, Mr. Fox! I'll never do such a thing! Hey! Get down from there! I no. want to eat you! No way! I just love to sing it! It's beautiful! No way. I want to eat no. you! Come on! No. Get down! No. No. But he wouldn't come down. So he when I noticed that Chancellor was gone, I started screaming, we have to go find him. That's cool. Oh my god, he's gone! I heard some chickens screaming, and then I had to check on my chickens. And then, uh, my best chicken, Chancellor, was uh, all gone. So what did you do when you saw Chancellor was gone? Uh, we went looking for him in the woods. And did you find him? Yeah, we did. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Wow, when you take a look at that. Chancellor's dream did come true in the end, and he did come away unscathed luckily. But he learned a very important lesson at the end of the story. He learned not to be overwhelmed by flattery. In the book it says, You will not with your soft soap and flatters to give me to sing again and close my eyes. That's basically Chancellor saying not to be overwhelmed by flattery. It's a very important lesson. That was a Nun's Priest Tale, Chris McLaughlin.